What we're going to be going over here is preferred stock. It's going to be non-cumulative and partially participating for dividends here. And this is where the dividends in excess of a defined percentage are going to be paid out here for their partially participating amount of this preferred stock. Now, our example here is where Corporation A has the following stock outstanding and retained earnings. They're going to have preferred stock, 4,000 shares at $100 par value at a 6% dividend rate. Common stock, they're going to have 10,000 shares at a $50 par value retained earnings. They have a total amount here of 140000 All are going to be paid out in dividends. Now the preferred stock participates in dividends in excess here of 8% here of the common stock. Now that's going to be partially participating in dividends as we have here. That's going to be anything excess of this 8% that's paid out to the common stock is going to be allocated here to the preferred stock or the remaining amount is going to go to the preferred stock here and the common stock. It's going to be allocated. Now also the preferred stock has two years of dividends in arrears. Okay, so the first thing we have to answer here, what is meant by partially participating in non-commutative uh, preferred stock? And we're going to look at it from the perspective here of the uh, parties here or the security holders perspective here. First here for partially participating. In addition to the specified fixed dividend, uh, you participate with the common stock in dividends up to or over a certain stated rate or amount. In this example, dividends in excess of 8% of the dividend rate here on common stock. Number two here, non-commutative preferred stock, that's where past dividends are lost forever. That is, dividends in arrears are not paid. Okay, so let's go look at our example here. Okay, starting with our, our preferred stock, it is non-cumulative and partially participating. So let's first here for our non-cumulative, as we mentioned, it does not pay out any dividends in arrears, so we don't have to be concerned with those two years of dividends that were uh, due here on this preferred stock. And what we mean here by partially, uh, it's going to partially participate with the common stock in dividends in excess here of 8%. Now the preferred stock has a 6% dividend rate. So let's look at our calculations here. So we have to take this total amount of dividends that we're going to pay out here, $140,000 worth, and we have to divide it between our preferred stock here in our common stock. So we start out with a preferred stock here, uh, 4,000 shares, $100 par, that's that 6% dividend rate, and that equates here to $24,000 for a preferred stock. Now with our common stock, we would go ahead and we're going to use this 6% um, uh, dividend rate here for our common stock allocation as well here. So we take the 10,000 shares, outstanding $50 par times that 6% dividend rate, and that comes up to $30,000 here for a common stock. Now this is where we have to calculate in here this additional amount that's going to go to the common stock. We accounted for the 6% here uh, for both our preferred and our common stock, but the preferred stock isn't going to really be allocated anything here until it gets above this 8% dividend rate here. So our common stock is going to get the next 2% here and that's going to go against their 10,000 shares outstanding $50 par times the 2% and that is going to be here equates to $10,000. So that's what the, the common stock gets allocated here because it's going to get the excess here above the 6% interest rate here between the 6 and the 8% interest rate. We could have just taken 8% here times the common stocks 10,000 shares and $50 par value to come up with, well, it would be $40,000 in that case. But I'm just showing that here because that's what it states here. Uh, the preferred stock is going to get a share in dividends here once we get above the 8%. That's allocated here to the common stock. So now this is where uh, we're going to have to figure out the balance of dividends on a pro rata basis here. Now this is the case here. We're going to have to pay out 140000 total in dividends here. We already allocated 24000 30000 and 10000 here to our preferred stock and our common stock. So the difference here is what we, remains here is $76,000 here. And let, we'll go down and look at that here. So uh, the additional amount available for participation, they call it, is that that's 76,000. And that's really just looking at it here as we talked about here. 140,000 less what we've already allocated here. 24,000 here from the preferred stock and 30,000 here plus and also minus 10,000 here for the common stock. So that gives us the difference here that we have to allocate is that $76,000. Now this is where we come in with uh, have to figure out the allocation here. So our, we start out with the par value of the stock 
uh, that's to, to participate here. So we have the common stock, 4,000 shares here, and we use the an $100 par value that equates to $400,000 here, or that the preferred, preferred stock, excuse me here if I didn't mention that here, equates to 400000 And then the common stock, well, we have 10,000 shares here at a $50 par, that equates here to $500,000. So we take our total amount here for our preferred stock and our common stock, that is $900,000. So that's going to be what we're going to be using here for determining this rate of participation here. So again, now let's look at the rate of participation here. Well, this is the case here where we take the amount that we have to have allocate here this or further to allocate here the 76,000 you divide it by the total par amount here of 900,000 and you're going to come up with a percentage here of a rate of participation here in this case it it's uh, 8.444 percent so again take the total amount here that we have to alloc remaining to allocate the 76,000 divided by the total par value here for both the preferred stock and the common stock here $900,000. Then we come up with that rate of participation or that percentage here. Now this is where we calculate the uh, allocate this total $76,000 in remaining dividends here. So we use this rate of participation here, that percentage here. Uh, you take that percentage here, the 8.44% times the preferred stock, its par, uh, total par value here, 400000 that we calculated here. That equates to $33,778. Do the same here for your common stock. Rate of participation here, uh, that percentage times the total par value here of $500,000, that equates to $42,222. So you can see here, this is we've allocated the total $76,000 here that we had to between the preferred stock here, got $33,778, and our common stock got the, the remaining amount here, $42,222. Again, that's based on its par value here and the rate of participation that we calculated. Okay, now we can go, let's just go and look at it in another way here. It might be a little easier to look at it here. And another way to compute their participating amount here. And you, again, we have, this is based on that 76,000 here. So we take a preferred stock, the uh, total par value of 400,000 divided by total for both the preferred stock and the common stock here at 900,000 times the amount that we have to allocate, the remaining 76,000. That equates to 33,778, same as we did up above here. And same for the common stock. Just take its total par value for the common stock divided by the total par value for both the preferred stock and the common stock times that 76,000 that we have to allocate. That comes up with $42,222. So we fit, calculated in the, the 70, divided up the 76,000 in the same fashion here. We only did it by this fractional amount here, taking its par, par value for the for the stock here divided by the total par value for both the both stocks, the preferred stock and the common stock times the amount that we have to allocate here and that that's how we did it here. So our total participating amount was 76,000. So we've really done it in two fashion. You can either do it on this based on this rate of participation here or you can do it in this fractional amount here based on the par value and the total par value. Okay, all right, so we've done that. So let's go back and let's look at our allocation here. So for our preferred stock, well, we just, we're, our balance here is on a prorated dividend basis here. That's what we calculated before here. 33,778 to our preferred stock and 42,000 here, 222 here to our common stock. That's on that pro rata basis that we calculated. Total amount here that we had remaining to allocate was that 76,000. So total allocation here for our dividends for a preferred stock, you just sum up here with the 24,000 plus the 33,778. Total dividend here of $57,778. And then you can total amounts here for your common stock. You're going to come up with 82,222. Sum up. Total amount here that we had allocated, total dividend between both the preferred stock and our common stock, $140,000. You can just add up either your column amount here or go across here in your row amount. You're going to come up with that here. Okay, so that's how we take, uh, take care of this uh, allocating our dividend here between a preferred stock and a common stock. But just to point out here, when we talked about this partici participa partially participating amount, that's where this additional... 2% came into play here for the common stock. 
remember we had it was anything about uh, preferred stock was going to get its um, dividend rate here based on its par value and a number of shares based on the six percent dividend rate here that was uh, defined or stated on the stock here but we're they're going to get an additional amount here that's where we're partially partially participating here because the common stock got that additional two percent here um, of, of dividends that we calculated here in that fashion. All right, so again, just remember you have to determine your balance here on a pro rata basis after you calculate to your total amount here uh, for uh, based on your uh, dividend percentage rates. And then the remaining amount, whatever is remaining here, you have to go and do it on that pro rata basis to determine your total stock allocations between your preferred stock and your common stock. Okay, so that takes care of our example here where we use it had to take this preferred stock where it's both non-cumulative and partially participating for dividends. All right, okay, that sums that up.